Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the end of August, so it's time for a late summer balcony garden maintenance day. Um, it's been really hot this past week. It's 43 degrees Celsius in the shade as we speak. And on top of that, I was away on holidays for one week, but this time my parents-in-law took a really good care of my plants. Everything survived. Um, but you know, that's funny how day to day not much seems to change, but then when you leave for one week, you come back and it looks like your garden doubled in size. So I have a lot of trimming and pruning and some deadheading to do because obviously with such high temperatures, a lot of the flowers dried up and they need some maintenance. I will also be harvesting my herbs I also will be making a mini bouquet for my Sunday challenge on Instagram uh, and at the end I will give you guys a tour um, of how the balcony looks at the end of August. I will show you some highlights because honestly not much has changed since July but I will show you uh, what's looking good at the moment. So let's begin. Let's start in the shade garden here. Two plants need a maintenance. My two hostas are pretty much done blooming. The flowers don't look attractive anymore so I'll cut the spent blooms off. Moving on, here we have a Cosmos to deadhead. I was really positively surprised with Cosmos this year. Um, it bloomed so beautifully, even though it doesn't receive a lot of sunlight, only a couple of hours of morning sun. But as you can see, it had plenty of flowers. They dried up now, so we will deadhead them. And this will also boost the plant, you know, to produce more flowers. And obviously, as you can see, the flowers are very small, so they didn't grow as large as they normally would if the plant was given a little bit more sunlight. But that's okay, because even small flowers are really cute. Okay guys, so we are now in the other corner of the balcony and here is my most beautiful and my most uh, incredible surprise this year, my beautiful dahlia. I tried growing dahlias in the past, it never worked because my balcony garden is northeast facing, so it only receives three to four hours of sunlight. And because there's this wall, most of the plants that are on the floor don't receive that direct sunlight. So it, they are in the shade for the entire day. Uh, but um, in June, I went to the garden center and they were just throwing away summer bulbs and tubers and they asked me would you like to save some bulbs because we have a few healthy bulbs it's such a shame to throw them away so they gave me two amaryllis they gave me one mirabilis that's here look it's completely completely covered in blooms um, and they gave me dahlia so i was obviously very skeptical because as i said i tried growing dahlias in the past they never really um, bloomed they grew they had healthy foliage but they never really produced any flowers so i was really surprised to see how many blooms this dahlia has um, and I placed it strategically as you can see I placed it on top of a pot so that it's high off the floor and it can get as much direct sunlight morning sunlight as possible so it gets probably three and a half to four hours of sunlight and it produced some really lovely blooms so I think I will give a try to dahlias next year I will buy a few dahlias and I will place them all this way strategically off the floor so that they can catch as much morning sunlight as possible so obviously some flowers didn't fully develop like some petals didn't unfold uh, and we don't have like a full flower but that's okay because look how many flowers it has and still plenty of flower buds so I will did have those funny looking blooms um, to give plant more energy for those flower buds to develop into healthy flowers. Okay, so now time to prune some stuff. This bay laurel grew a ton when I was away um, and I'm training it into topiary. I do get a lot of questions about this particular plant, how I trained it into a topiary. The way I trained it, I started when the plant was very small. I had it since it was a teeny tiny baby plant like this. I have to start with a very young tree that has a very flexible stems. Um, and as it grows, you start to train it. Um, that's as much as I can tell you right now without showing you any example. Um, and then obviously every single year I have to maintain that shape. So as you can see, it grows new shoots in all kinds of directions. So to maintain that beautiful rounded uh, sphere that around the topiary shape I prune it usually once a year and that's enough uh, and obviously because the two stems are twisted the plant produces a lot of suckers from the base 
Uh, and there are also some weeds growing that we need to remove. So all these suckers, you have to remove them, obviously, to keep the clear trunk. So that's what we are gonna do. I do get a lot of weeds in my containers. And even some self-seeded pansy, look at this. I'm gonna keep it because pansies are just the cutest. I will transplant it later on when it will be a bit bigger, when I will have some empty containers. So now for the suckers, I just um, cut them at the base here. Smells amazing when you prune bay laurel. So now we'll try to create a nice a rounded shape. And honestly, I don't really pay much attention. Um, as you can see, I'm cutting the sometimes the leaf in a half because that would take too much time if I wanted really to cut in between the leaves. And it's really important also to turn your plants around, especially when you have a topiaries, because if, you, if the sun comes from one direction and your plant is all the time facing that one direction, it will grow towards the light. So you will end up with a very misshapen uh, topiary. Uh, so remember to move the plant to turn it around every couple of weeks so that it grows nice and even. plant that I would like to prune. It is the Sigonimus Fortunii harlequin, a beautiful variegated plant. The leaves get like a pink tinge in winter. Uh, such a beautiful low maintenance plant. This really doesn't require any maintenance at all. You can basically forget about this plant. And I placed um, like three bamboo sticks in here because you can do pretty much anything with this plant. You can let it grow wild, you can train it into a small climber, you can um, create topiaries and all kinds of things with it. So at first I let it grow wild, but now I think I want to create it. Uh, I want to create a bow, uh, and I will buy a trellis or an obelisk, like a rounded metal obelisk that I will place in the center, because I want it to grow into a bow. So I'm gonna start training it into a bow right now. You know, when you start to train your plants into topiaries or into a certain shape, they will never look great immediately. You know, it takes sometimes two, three years before they start to look the way you wish they looked. So just be very patient and uh, keep on trimming them, keep on pruning them, but not more than twice a year. If you feel a bit intimidated by training a plant into a topiary or if you are a little bit impatient and you want a topiary fast, you don't want to wait three years or two, three years before your plant starts to look like a topiary, there is a quicker way to achieve it. Uh, all you need is to buy yourself some very funny looking um, obelisk. It can be rounded, cone-shaped, spiral. Here I have a cone-shaped and to grow a climbing plant on top of it. Uh, ivy plants are great for that because first of all, they grow really rapidly. You can grow them in the shade, in the sun. Um, they are evergreen, so they will look great no matter the season. And within a year or two, depending on the size of your topiary, depending on the size of your ivy plant, it can cover uh, the entire obelisk and it can look beautiful. It can create a lovely topiary. Obviously, this one looks a little bit unruly. I started to print it already. Uh, but there's still much to be done to make it look like a topiary again. And there are so many ivies to choose from. Here I have ivy glass here uh, with beautiful variegated leaves. Uh, but there are all kinds of ones. There are ones with smaller leaves, larger leaves. They propagate really well. You just need to cut a piece like that, remove the bottom leaves, root it in water or root it in a pot with small pot with soil. And then you can reuse them uh, in compositions or to create more topiaries, more uh, fun creations 
in your balcony garden. So let's continue to prune this topiary so that it looks uh, more like a topiary, not like some unruly wild plant. Okay, pruning done. Now it's time to harvest and dry some herbs. Look at my herb plant there. It literally exploded. The basil took over the entire space. Uh, I showed in a video how I planted it. There's a whole bunch of herbs mixed together. Um, there is parsley, chives, two types of mint and basil. Uh, and I planted it all into one crate to save some space because obviously if I were to plant these plants separately, it would take a lot of floor space. Uh, and this way it's contained in one planter so it doesn't take up much space. So the herbs are harvested and I hung them here on this wooden ladder because uh, it's really warm outside and they are in the shade here so I think that's um, these are perfect conditions for them to dry. Usually I put them in my oven on a low temperature for like 3-4 hours to dry but I thought well it's so hot outside it will be uh, silly to put them in the oven while they can dry outside. Okay, one other thing that I need to do that I completely forgot about is to put my caladiums into dormancy because as you can see, they are done for the year. Uh, when they start to produce those very tiny, very small leaves, that's a sign that they are already tired and uh, we can start to put them into dormancy. I plant mine really early, like already in uh, March. So they grow for me from like mid-April all the way until the end of August, beginning of September. I treat them more as houseplants uh, because they look kind of tropical, kind of exotic. Um, and there was a time when I wanted my balcony garden to look like a jungle. I had canna lilies and caladiums and uh, banana trees and all kinds of exotic and tropical looking plants. But I'm past that time, I guess. I prefer something more calm, more like garden-like, not necessarily like a tropical jungle. So I grow caladiums as houseplants and they look gorgeous. Uh, inside uh, but as you can see now they look really tired so it's pretty simple I just cut all the foliage and I only have two I used to have plenty of them like five six but now I only keep two the ones that I like the most the ones that grow the best for me So now I will brush off excess soil. So because caladiums are so prone to rot, so first of all, I will leave them, I will bring them inside, put them on a paper towel, let them completely dry out. Uh, and then I will again remove excess soil and once they are completely dry, I will store them in a paper bag uh, in a cool and dark place until I'm ready to plant them again next spring. Okay, you guys, so it's almost all done. One last thing that I want to do is to create a mini bouquet for my Sunday challenge. So at the beginning of this year on Instagram, I created a weekly challenge called My Mini Bouquet. Uh, there were several go goals for this. First of all, to encourage people to grow more flowers on their balconies or in their urban gardens, to inspire one another on what plants we can grow, what seasonal plants. Uh, but mostly it was to show and to prove that you do not need a large garden to enjoy a few cut flowers and to enjoy mini bouquets. 
Uh, and honestly, I did not expect that so many people will enjoy this channel, challenge and so many people will enjoy participating every week. We have so many bouquets every Sunday. Obviously, during summer there's more bouquets, but even in winter people were participating and it was so lovely to see um, all of those creations. So it's really a fun challenge. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please check it out. It's 17 square meters garden. It would be lovely if you could join us as well. It's every Sunday uh, and people post their mini bouquets on their pages or in their stories and then I repost them into my stories as an inspiration to show to everyone else. So it's a really fun challenge, I really enjoy it and I hear from a lot of you that you also enjoy it. So that's, that's really, really cool. So now I'm gonna cut a few flowers from my garden to have a mini bouquet for this Sunday's event. Okay you guys, this is gonna be it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed this balcony garden maintenance day with me. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye!